Yeah, so. What do we got? What do we got? <laughs> you want to poke the wire, huh? Well, I don't know. Either that or you got to get into the connector. I mean, Gerald would probably appreciate it if we didn't poke the wire. Right, that's what I was thinking. Not that he cares anymore, but he might laugh at us. Well, if you had a, uh, a little... Uh... I wanted to see what it was when it was hooked up. Just off that one wire. Well, you got but some, we can check it that way. Just you got to some see. paper clips? Yeah, I'll go get one. Let's see what it is here. Stick them <laughs> you don't, you didn't bring the kit with all the different ends? I do, there's some more pocket. <laughs> you need the alligator clips. Down them in there. There's probably some that plug right onto those. There's all kinds of stuff. You need I a need hand the, there? I need the other ones. Sir, that's not going to work. You're just embarrassing yourself on video now. That's all right. <laughs> I could care less. I doubt it. Wait till you see the comments. I don't get I don't get any comments anymore. <laughs> you don't what? Hard oh, what are we doing? This <laughs> right, turn it, shut it down. <laughs> After all that, I was I was so close. Did happen this? <laughs> oh man, not really. That's one thing I don't like about these ones. Oh. You ought to read it because I can. It was fifty-five point three. So, we'll plug it back in. Oh, is that really? So oh, that would that'd be a little over half. Right. Well, fifty-five. We'll plug it 40. back in and I'll see what the what fifty-five ohms is on the scale here. Well, actually, I don't. You don't need to plug it in for me to do that. But what is it? Which one? Do you have? Yeah, I mean, we can plug it in. So it's fifty-five ohms. And that would be about the fuel gauge should have showed about in between 60 and 65 probably, but it doesn't. So where's the other wire going to? I don't know. I'll have to follow it. He he didn't remember if he ran it up to the this or not. The fuel level says it keeps going to 49. It's been dead on this whole time. No. Oh. 49. A fuel level of 49 would mean eh. This is easier with the mouse. Have I mentioned that? 49 would be, well, that doesn't have that option. It'd be in between 42 and 48 ohms. So it is off. But see, I could enter that. See, that was 55 ohms. Yeah, that's 55.3 ohms. And what was the gauge reading? 49. But I don't know how much gas is in there, so I shouldn't mess with that. You said it was reading 49. Yeah. It was reading 55 here. Well, the gauge is reading 49% full. The ohms back there was 55. Which it should be, according to this, the gauge should be reading in between 60 and 66. But it's not. I should just uh, stop filming this. So I should start by doing that. Updates. Uh, the sending unit, no good. Uh, it looks like 
the circuit board got ate up inside of here. I'll throw some video clips I have on my phone if I can get them to work of Jimmy testing it. It reads max ohms of like 55 and which it should be 90 obviously. Anyway, there's a few issues. It, it reads really weird. It's erratic and uh, they're sending another one because it is not very old and luckily Gerald had the uh, invoice number so they looked it up and said it should be good for E85 but they don't make that they just sell it but so it's very cool of them to send another one out so that is from Rick's Tanks that's who this tank is made by uh, they don't make the sending unit but they sell it so not their fault but they're taking care of it which is awesome so this is sitting until that is back and then there is an issue with the shock waves hitting the rear end housing so we'll look at that and might have to make some modify the upper mounts to move them away something hopefully i can get jimmy going on um otherwise i'll just uh move this back in the other garage for now get it out of the way so I think right now I'm going to spot prime these three. I don't know, you don't have to do that one, but definitely that one and that one. Spot prime those now. That way I can re-120 them tomorrow. And then continue sanding on the other side and then the hood. Stuff like that. So let me get this masked up. So, I had it all masked up. By masked it up, I mean I used this piece of cardboard and kind of held it around where I was priming and uh, got that spot there. This one here, which I really didn't need to do, but I was already doing spots just like that one down there. Those were just hand throughs to the filler. Not a big deal. This one, I actually. Uh, did a little bit more filler work right here. I mean, I welded a little piece of rod on the end of the door right there to make that gap a little bit tighter. So that's good. And then I sanded through here uh, because I was trying to block it straight from this edge over to here, not paying attention, forgetting that this angles in and stops right here and flattens out. So I wasn't paying attention, like I just said, because I think I was talking to Jimmy, so I blamed him for distracting me. So. There's nothing wrong there, but I just put some more on there so I can sand it again. Hopefully I pay attention this time. And then uh, this spot here that I sanded through to filler, which was also fine. Um, being that I am going to put a final primer or a sealer on this, uh, I just kind of wanted to hit the the sand throughs that went to filler. There's one up there, but it's only to epoxy. And it is fine. Um, yeah, so really what I should be doing in my eyes is finishing the poly to a 400 grit dry. And then using a sealer like a wet on wet seal it and paint it. I think that would be the best way. What I do is I get it to 320 dry and then I cruise over it with a, a interface pad or one of those soft uh, sanding pads or something like that with a 600 or 800 grit. I put like two even smooth coats of uh, sealer over it and then I let that dry and I wet sand that sealer with uh, 600. And then I paint over that. That way, I mean, I don't get any uh, texture from the sealer in my paint job. I'm, I'm painting over a smooth sanded surface. Uh, the sealer I'm using is Color Build, which is also a primer, but it has a sealer converter. Um, I've done it both ways, using it as a primer, as a sealer, but. 
I know some sealers you can't wet sand like that, so that's the only reason I'm telling you that. Um, anyway, we've been doing it that for, I don't know, long time, 10 years. Well, I've been doing it that way forever, but I've been using this exact, this product for probably over 10 years and haven't had anything delaminate yet that I know of. Um, I don't remember how we did Jim's truck. I think that's how we, yeah, that's how we did his truck. That's how we did Angel's Nova. And so those are my, uh, my, uh, gold standards, I guess. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'll just quit talking now. Um, tomorrow I'll come and sand these spots out. And then re-guide coat this side and hit it with the last two grits. And uh, maybe I'll show you what's going on with the shock waves on the back of this. I'm gonna need to jack it up and uh, stuff like that. All right. So with this tipped upside down, I'm gonna say that's gonna read full. And that's what we were getting in your tank. So full is 55.2. Impies 1.0. there we're reading close to full right what this thing will read now listen <laughs> 